Okay, here is uh, another example that's kind of a strange isolated problem, but I've seen this come up on AP tests and so forth, and it's one of those conceptual ones I want you to think about. So um, let's take a look at this. Now, um, it's asking us to do the limit as x approaches 0 of this function absolute value of x over x. Um, now, we don't really know any other techniques, and for this problem, there really is no other one. So, we've kind of been working graphically. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a graph of this function to see if I can look at the function and determine what the limit is. So, let me go ahead and I'm going to make an xy table here. And if you want to do this on your own first, you know, it might be a good idea to pause this and actually make this chart up real quick and then, you know, check with me once you, um, once you finish this. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0... One, two, three. Okay, so if I put negative three in here, it's going to take the absolute value of the top, so I'll just kind of do this one, and then the rest of them, you should see what I'm doing from here, over negative three. And uh, so the absolute value will make the top part actually equal to three, and the bottom still will be negative three, so that will be negative one. And the same idea will happen with negative two when I put it in, you know, I'll just take the absolute value and it'll make it positive, but over negative two still. So this will be still be negative one. And at negative 1 here, this again will be negative 1. And you can check just like I did right here if you need to to plug that in. At 0, it does not exist. There's no value because when you plug 0 in, you get 0 in the denominator. So, therefore, there's no value there. can't divide by 0. When I plug 1 in, you know, and I take the absolute value of 1, it's still just 1, so it's going to be 1 over 1. And therefore, this will be 1 along with all these. So when I plot those on a graph here, I have all these negative values here, I had a point at 1, or negative 1 for all of those, all these I had a point at 1. Something I always see in class is my students want to just connect the dots, so they draw a line out here and just connect this dot to here. But we've got to think, you know, think for instance on here, so 1, we, we left off there, but if we had gone closer like at 0.5, it still would have been 0.5 over 0.5. If we had chosen 0.1 for our table, 0.1 over 0.1 would still be 1. You know, so. Basically, what I'm saying is, as, as this gets closer and closer to zero, I mean, the y value still stays one. It's just actually at zero, it doesn't exist. And the same thing happens on the negative side. So there's a hole in the graph right here. So that's what this graph looks like. So now we're going back. The whole point of this was to figure out the limit. We want to know what is the limit as x approaches zero of this guy right here. Well, let's look on this. Let's use our fingers on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I'll put my fingers on the graph to the left of, and right of zero move into that x value, and I notice that from the left-hand side, I'm approaching negative 1. From the right-hand side, I'm approaching positive 1. The limit does not exist. Okay, so this, the answer to this one is does not exist. And this same concept and idea applies to problems. You know, they'll change it up a little bit, maybe do something like this. So if I have x minus 2 over x minus 2. But the same idea applies, and if you're confused, um, you can go ahead and you can make a you know xy table real quick for that and work it out. But whenever you see an absolute value of the same thing over something else, or it might be you know it could have been x over the absolute value of x, it would have worked out the same. You know, um, it's it's always this type of deal. All right, let's look at another type of uh, limit here that doesn't exist. So for instance, um, look at one over x um, as x approaches zero, and then we'll just kind of look at some graphically as opposed to actually having a function even, but. Um, the graph of 1 over x looks like this, okay, and you can graph it if you want, or, um, but what you'll notice here is x approaches 0, if I just even look just from the right-hand side, um, what this is doing here, this value is um, getting infinitely large, okay, so as, as the x value approaches 0, the y value just continues to increase forever and ever and ever, and same thing on the other side, the y value just decreases forever and ever and ever. So. Um, you know, in order for a limit to exist, it has to approach a certain y value. And some people might say, oh, it's infinity. And sometimes, I mean, this couldn't be written as infinity because this goes to positive, this goes to negative. If you had a graph where maybe on this side it went up to infinity as well, you could say infinity, but I want you to realize that what that means is that the limit doesn't exist because it approaches infinity. So, you know, you, know, you can always just say that this limit does not exist, okay, in a case such as that. So, again, just let me draw that out. If you had a graph like this, okay, and you notice from the left and the right-hand side, they're both you know, going up to infinity, um, this limit still does not exist at x equals 0 of this graph. 
okay? Because the Y values continue to grow forever, and if they continue to grow forever, they have it has no limit because the Y doesn't ever approach a certain Y value. Okay, so just to recap real quick, um, we saw a couple cases where the limit doesn't exist. Um, you know, I, we just talked about, uh, that's a horrible graph, I'm sorry, but you're going to infinity or negative infinity, and it doesn't have to be at zero, it could be anywhere. So if there's like a vertical asymptote and it goes to infinity or negative infinity, at that value where there's a vertical asymptote, the limit doesn't exist. So this, these are examples of does not exist at some point, you know. If I had now, if I had said, what is the limit at x equals, let's say that's x equals 1 or 2, that limit exists at that point, but at zero, this limit doesn't exist. Okay, so again, at x equals zero, this limit does not exist. Um, another case would be something like this. If you have a graph that splits off, so let's say here this would be like at, at x equals one. So at x equals one, this does not exist because from the left-hand side, from the right-hand side, it goes to you know, two different y values. But we want to make sure that we do realize that something like this, if we have something like this, where there's a hole in the graph, this limit exists. So let's say that's at x equals 1. So that limit exists. Okay? If I'm spelling things right, I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, at x equals 1, this has a limit. Sometimes they'll even do something weird like this, where they'll put like a random dot up here at x equals 1. So the actual value of the function might be, for instance, let's say that's like 4. So this function might have a y value of 4 at x equals 1. Really strange. But the limit would actually be what this number is. Let's say it's a 2. So whatever the y value is, kind of where that missing portion is. So if you were to actually replace it with something, you know, that's what the limit would be. So again, in this case, let me just be real clear. Let's say I call this g of x. So in this case, it works out that g of 1 is equal to 4. Because that 1, that's where that dot is, you know, kind of a random function. But the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x is actually equal to 2. And I've put 2 right there, so I've got a 4 or 2 right there. So, kind of a weird case, and this goes back again. Don't ever think, don't ever assume since just because g of 1 equals 4 that the limit has to equal 4 at 1. No, in this case the limit equals a totally different number, okay? And of course they like to always screw you up with weird things like that, so don't let them confuse you on that. Um, there is another type of limits that don't exist. We really never see them. Um, you know, in calculus, when we work with stuff, so I'm not super worried about it, but it's, uh, it's an oscillating behavior, which basically if you look at a graph, like the sine of 1 over x, I believe, um, just take a peek real quick, yeah, sine of 1 over x, if you graph that, as it gets close to zero, basically it just goes up and down really, really fast and oscillates, and that's another example where the limit doesn't exist, but not too concerned because we don't see that too often.